So in the past few tutorials in C++, we have always been using variables to store data. However, the problem with variables is that they're only meant for short-term memory storage. What this means is, as soon as your program closes up, that means all the data that you've stored inside your variable gets deleted. So the next time when you open your program and you want to reference that data, it's no longer there. So what if we wanted to store that data and access it again in the future or perhaps in a later session? In that case, what we would use is something other than variables. In fact, we would have to use something such as databases or files. Because databases and all these other types of storage methods are a little bit more complicated to implement as of our current experience level, we're going to focus on something a little bit easier, and that is files. <music> Hey, what is up guys? My name is Eric and in today's episode, we're going to be focusing on creating files in C++ so that we can create them and writing data to our files. Now, in order to start working with files in C++, we have to first include a single library into our file. So on the very top after the IL stream or perhaps above it, that's fine. Add in the line include angle brackets and then type in F stream. Now what this library does is it basically gives you the ability to create files, open them, write to them, and all that good stuff. Now if we were to go into our main function, we will now create a file object. So to create a file object, type in of stream, followed by a name for this object. So let's just call it my file. You can name it whatever you want. Next, we're going to type in my file dot open semicolon. Now what this dot open will do is basically it will reference and store the file path or file location of the specific text file or whatever file that we're trying to create or use into our my file file object. So in double quotes inside the parentheses, give your file a name. So for instance, let's say we wanted to store our game's settings. So we'll just call it settings.txt. Now, once this line is created, what it basically does is now the my file file object is going to reference and represent the settings.txt file on your computer. Because after all, there are millions of files on your computer and you have to have your program have some way to remember which specific file it's going to access. And this is basically what will allow it to do so. After that, you can start doing whatever you want to do with the file, such as writing, reading, whatever. And then after that, you would have to close it off with myfile.close parentheses. So make sure you have this dot .close line at the very end once you're finished with whatever you have to do with the file. The reason why we want to add this dot .close line of code after all the stuff we want to do with the file is for memory management purposes. Okay, so normally, if we want to display data into the console window, we would use the C outline and then followed by the message. So hello, console window, end line. However, if we want to store data into our settings.txt file, what do we do now? Instead of C outing, we would use my file and then angle brackets, and then the message. So, hello, I'm in the file. End line. Actually, if you want to make a new line, it's best to use that instead. So this backslash n or forward slash n or whatever it's called. This is basically what will allow you to make a new line inside a string without using end line. Okay, so if we were to compile and run this program, let's see what would happen. So as you can see, the console window shows hello console window. Okay, so what happened to the hello I'm in the file? Shouldn't it be displaying in the console window? Well, no. Like I said, C out is what will allow you to see the contents on the console window. However, in this case, we're actually storing this line of code, hello I'm in the file, into the my file file object. Again, in this case, because my file file object is actually referencing the settings.txt file, we're going to have to open our C++ project folder and inside the folder with the name of your project's folder. There should be another one. Open that and then you should see the text file that your program has generated. And as you can see here, it shows the settings.txt. So if we were to open this file, what do you think will show? For those of you who guessed it will show, hello, I'm in the file, you are correct. And as you can see, it does. Okay, so at this point, you're probably wondering, okay, what if the file settings.txt did not exist 
in this folder. Well, in that case, this program will automatically generate the settings.txt file for you. However, if a settings.txt file already exists in there, it will just overwrite the data inside that text file. Okay, so the next thing we'll learn is how to combine these two lines of code into one line. Now, to combine these two lines of code into one line, to speed up the development process, this is all you would need. So first off, let's comment those two lines out and then let's create a new one. So OF stream my file. This time, instead of ending it with a semicolon, what you would do next is add in a pair of parentheses and a semicolon. And inside the parentheses, you would add in the name of your file. So in this case, it would be settings.txt. And as you can see, this whole line basically represents these two lines in one line. Really convenient, right? If we were to compile and run this program, we should see the exact same result as before without any changes. After all, the two-liner is basically the same as this one-liner. And as you can see, the console window shows hello console window. Perfect. And not only that, if we were to go back to our settings file and open it up, it shows the same thing. Hello, I'm in the file. Okay, so what if we wanted to reference this file, but we aren't sure whether the file object has opened this file or not? Basically, is it referencing it? One way to check whether or not it's being referenced is by using the isOpen method or function that's part of the file stream object. So to do that, let's create an if else statement. Inside the parentheses of your if else statement, type in my file dot is underscore open. Now this will return a boolean value, meaning true or false. So what this function dot is open will do is it'll check if your my file file object has a file reference to it or not. So if it does, let's see out the file is open in line. Otherwise, see out the file is closed. End line. So if we were to compile and run this program, it should show the file is open. As you can see, it shows the file is open and then followed by the own message that we've left over there from part one. And with all of this in mind, you have now learned how to create files in C++ as well as how to open and close them and write data into your file. Thank you for watching and be sure to like this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe if you haven't already, and if you have any questions at all, be sure to leave it in the comments below and I'll respond to it as soon as possible. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.